All right, everybody. We are beginning the second half of our Egypt unit. Um, and today we are going to talk about a time period in history known as the Middle Kingdom. Now, just so you're aware, um, the kingdoms in Egypt, the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom, those are names that historians gave these kingdoms. The Egyptians didn't say like, you know, at the time of the pyramids, they weren't like, oh, it's a good day in the old kingdom. Like, no, it was just Egypt. Um, historians found major um, events and kind of divided ancient history into th for Egypt into three pieces, the old, middle, and new kingdom. So we learned about the old kingdom. So in the second half, we're going to learn about the middle and new kingdom. And the old kingdom is a long period of time. The New Kingdom is a long period of time. The Middle Kingdom is pretty short, um, and we're going to go over why that is today. Okay, so here's how the time period known as the Old Kingdom comes to an end. So about 2300 BCE, government officials say, you know what? We're doing a lot of work here. We want more power. So they're doing the work ruling Egypt because the pharaoh at this time, this guy Pepe II, is in his 90s. Now, that is extremely rare for ancient times for someone to live in their 90s. That would be like today, someone making it to be like 110 or something. Does it happen? Yes. Is it rare? Yes. And Pepe II is the pharaoh. And as you can imagine, as he gets older, once he's in like his 70s, he can't really do too much um, for Egypt. So he needs to rely on the government officials to help him a lot in his old age. And when he gets to be in his 90s, the government officials are actually doing most of the work of being Pharaoh and Pepe the second is just living the life of a 90 year old, basically chilling all day. Um, once Pepe the second finally dies. Oh, and let me, let me just explain a little bit. So you might be wondering like, how did this all happen? So Pepe becomes Pharaoh when he's six years old. Now that doesn't mean like, there was like baby Pharaoh ruling things like rattle in one hand, sword in the other. No, 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 no. Um, when you're a kid and you're named Pharaoh, and the reason he became Pharaoh is he was the oldest son when his dad died. Um, when he became Pharaoh at six years old, you obviously can't be in charge of a country. So there's people that rule on your behalf. And then when um, you become 18, you got to be the Pharaoh. So. Pepe um, lived to be about, I want to say he was like around like 96 or so. Um, so it was like he ruled for just over 90 years. Um, so once he finally died, um, there was an interesting situation. So Pepe outlived his sons. So normally, like, a pharaoh dies, the next son takes over, and then the next son. Well, Pepe had two sons, and they both died um, when they were, like, I think one died when they were 60 and one died when they were 50 because, or no, he was also in his 60s. So they both died when they were in their 60s. Um, so Pepe had no person to leave, like, who's going to be pharaoh to. So when he died, the government officials that had been running things for old Pepe say, we're going to stay in power. We've been running the show the whole time. Therefore, we should keep running the show because he's got no kids left alive to take over. Now, this causes a major crisis in Egypt because as you'll remember, the Egyptians believe that a pharaoh has its power because Horus is inside of him. So to an Egyptian person, they have a hard time dealing with this because they're like, but where's Horus? Horus can't be in all of you. The government official says, yes, Horus is so powerful. He's in all of us, and that's why we're in charge. 
and the Egyptian people are like, no, that doesn't make sense. And then the, the government officials say, well, Horus probably left Pepe years ago because we were running things. And it becomes a huge mess in Egypt. So there, there tends to become a power struggle. And this power struggle lasts about 200 years. And it's between the government officials and some relatives of Pepe that said they should be pharaoh. So for generations and generations, there is a pharaoh. Um, one of Pef Pepe's, I believe, nephews becomes pharaoh. Um, but the government officials basically stay on to do a lot of the work. So it's like a joint rule between the government officials and the and the pharaohs. Um, and the government officials... You might be thinking, like, why did they let that? They had that power. Well, it's because of the whole Horus question. They needed someone there that they could say to the Egyptian people, yes, Horus is inside of that person, but we're going to make decisions too. Um, and that's the way it was. So this power struggle goes on between the government officials and the pharaohs, and it goes on for 200 years, which is a good chunk of time. Now, as I mentioned, the pharaohs stay... Um, important in ancient Egypt because of that whole connection to the gods and the whole belief that the spirit of Horus is inside of a pharaoh. Now, this does cause a little bit of weakening of the power of the pharaoh. It's for this reason that pyramids no longer get built. So the government officials um, basically say, like, because so um, they, they basically say, like, nobody has built a pyramid in, like, 50 years because they finished building Pepe II's pyramid when he was, like, 40 years old. And then for 50 years, they didn't need to start construction on another pyramid because there was no pharaoh. So 50 years of not building a pyramid, you have a lot of people living in Egypt that never built a pyramid before that are like, what? what? We're going to do what? Um so the government officials, so reason number one, that whole building a pyramid skill kind of goes away. And number two, uh, the government officials are like, well, if we're, you know, secretly kind of in power as well, why does a pharaoh get a pyramid? Why don't we get a pyramid instead? So basically they say no more pyramids. Um, Horus by now knows where he's going. It's been so many pharaohs. So they have special tombs built for pharaohs and then also government officials get tombs as well. And it's an area, um, let me pull up my map of, of Egypt. It's an area down here in Upper Egypt that's known as the Valley of the Kings. So it becomes a special area for pharaohs. So pyramids are no longer built starting um, in the Middle Kingdom due to this um, kind of interesting thing about, you know, it's partly because of the gap in time between finishing Pepe's pyramid and like a new Pharaoh coming in that so many people had never built a pyramid before. It's like a lost skill. And also the whole like government officials want to be viewed as, as powerful. And they, they, they view it more as like, we get tombs, Pharaohs get tombs. There we go. Well, Here's what happens next. So that's the Middle Kingdom, and it comes to an end because Egypt gets invaded. Their cataracts fail them. So remember how we talked about Egyptian cataracts, how there's a desert over here. There's the Nile River that has, like, waterfalls in it. There's a desert over here. We have the Mediterranean Sea. So during the whole time of the Old Kingdom... And the Middle Kingdom, because this, this event is going to end the Middle Kingdom. Um, Egypt doesn't have to worry about getting invaded or conquered. Their cataracts are standing up. Well, that changes when there's a group of people called the Hyksos that come to town. So the Hyksos were from an area between Egypt. So here's Egypt. And then you remember Mesopotamia is right over here in what is today Iraq. So the Hyksos lived in what is today part of the country called Jordan. And there's a river over here, the Jordan River, 
Um, it, today, it's the border between Jordan and Israel. But the Hyksos lived along this side of the Jordan River, and they develop a war chariot, something that um, they can use to cross the desert and attack the Egyptians. Now, let me scroll down and explain some more. So the Hyksos, in addition to having a war chariot, their weapons are made out of bronze and iron. These weapons are much lighter and easier to use than the Egyptian weapons of copper and stone. So, um, the reason lighter, we lighter and stronger weapons give you an advantage is you can move faster with them. Um, it's kind of like this. Here's This is like a weird example to kind of say this. Let's say I was going to fight somebody. Who am I going to fight? Um, I'm going to pick on somebody that... I don't want to name anyone in class because then people would be like, why didn't you fight me? I wanted to fight you. Um, so let's say, uh, who should I fight? Let's say I was going to fight Mr. Sacco. I'll just use him as an example. And I know some of you are like, ooh, teacher versus principal. No, 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 no. Um, but I'm just using him for example. And let's say Mr. Sacco is the best twig fighter the world has ever known. You give Mr. Sacco a twig, he is amazing with that twig. Like, he can do things with the twig no one else could do. And I'm going to attack him. But I'm not bringing a twig. I'm getting in a plane that has, like, bombs on it. I'm flying up into the sky, and I'm dropping a bomb right on Mr. Sacco. Now, if he takes his twig and hits the bomb as it falls, he's still going to lose because my weapon is more superior. So the point I'm trying to make with that very weird example, I know, very strange. The point I'm trying to make is that even though the Egyptians have weapons that are copper and stone, the Hyksos have better weapons, and it gives them an advantage. Now, this time period... Um, is, is an interesting one because, as I mentioned, the Hyksos are able to take control because of horse-drawn chariots while the Egyptians fought on foot. And I'm going to show you a short little video. Um, it talks about Egyptian chariots. They come later, but it gives you kind of the, the gist of why a chariot is a superior weapon, especially when you're fighting somebody that doesn't have a chariot. So, um, charge. The Egyptians are like, oh my gosh, the pharaoh is gone, because obviously the Hyksos don't have a pharaoh, they have a king. Um, so the Egyptians are like, Horus must be gone. Where is Horus? And then they think back to their mythology, and they say, well, the person that fought Horus was this guy Seth in mythology. He is, um, he is like basically the bad guy in Egyptian mythology. And in mythology for Egypt, sometimes it says Seth, like it says here, and sometimes there's no H and it's just Set. So if you see Set or you see Seth, that's the same god, it's just different names. Um, so they, saw, they thought Seth had been in charge because there wasn't a pharaoh, and that's what's enabling the Hyksos to rule over them for this 150 years. But then things change. So, 150 years is a long time to be in charge of a group of people. That is like if somebody took over something in the year 1870 and ruled it to now. So, 150 years is a good chunk of time. Well, here's what happens next. Over these 150 years, the Egyptian people learned how to make weapons just like the Hyksos. So the Hyksos, after ruling for this time, they start to get a little, uh, I guess, overconfident in things, and they start forcing the Egyptians to make the, the weapons for the Hyksos. And the Egyptians, like, while they're making these weapons, secretly train to use them. 
So what ends up happening is we have a rebellion. And the rebellion is led by this guy, Amos. Sometimes you hear his name pronounced Amosa. Um, but, you know, Amos, Amosa, same person. So Amos is an Egyptian that is related to the pharaohs of the past. This is a descendant, a relative of the past pharaohs. It's 150 years where there was no pharaohs. Amos is like, you know, someone who's like great, great grandfather was a pharaoh. So um, Amos leads this rebellion against the Hyksos and it works because now, like initially when the Hyksos took over, it was the Hyksos and their better weapons against the Egyptians. Um, Now they have the same kind of weapons because the Egyptians have been training secretly and Amos leads the rebellion, and the Hyksos are victorious. And Amos defeats the Hyksos, drives them away from Egypt, so they go back to what is today Jordan. And what's going to happen um, later on in, in history, in the time of the New Kingdom, the Egyptians are going to annihilate the Hyksos and kind of wipe them out. Um, but that comes later on. So Amos, leading the rebellion, the Egyptian people are like, wow, Amos, this is amazing. And they're like, I don't know, doing the ancient Egyptian version of the high five or something. And the people start saying, in order for Amos to have led this rebellion, Horus must be inside of you. Horus must have come back. He must have defeated Seth somehow. And now he must be inside of Amos. And that makes Amos the brand new Pharaoh. So, um, That's the Middle Kingdom. I'm going to kind of walk you through a little flow chart just to kind of summarize everything um, a little clearer. So we start with the end of old, I mean, at the start of the Old Kingdom, pharaohs have lots of power. There's pyramids getting built, all that kind of stuff that you learned in the first test. Then government officials start running Egypt because Pepe is old. Um, and actually, if I want to be historically correct, that be the second. So those two eyes there, these are Roman numerals. So when we talk about people um, in history, you don't really, um, in ancient history, call people junior. So Pepe Junior is is not what historians use. They say Pepe the second, and they use Roman numerals. So if you are a junior, if you're someone who's a junior, um, if if you go on to do like like let's say you conquer places although that would make you like a horrible person if you're conquering places uh, let's just say you're an important person in history um they could call you the second if they wanted to all right so um pepe's old so the government officials are running egypt then the government officials start fighting for power after pepe dies it leads to this return of power to the pharaoh when a pharaoh is named because the government officials are like, well, we don't have a good explanation for the whole, like, Horus is inside the pharaoh, so we need someone there. Um, But the pharaoh isn't as strong as it used to be. And that is what begins the Middle Kingdom. So the Old Kingdom ends really with the death of Pepi, And then this transition, this period here with the government officials and and Pharaoh, like kind of like fighting for power, that's what's known in Egyptian history as an intermediate period. Um, And then we have the Middle Kingdom, when power returns to the Pharaohs, but they're not as strong, and they still have the government officials helping them. And in the Middle Kingdom, in the beginning, life is good. But then the Hyksos invade. Now, the Hyksos invading ends the Middle Kingdom. So that's why the Middle Kingdom is short, is because the Hyksos invaded. Um, And when the Hyksos are in charge, it's another intermediate, intermediate period in Egyptian history. So then we have the Hyksos ruling Egypt for 150 years. The Egyptians think... The Hyksos are in charge because of Seth. And then Amos leads a rebellion, 
sending the Hyksos back to their homeland. And when Amos becomes the new pharaoh, that's where historians say the timeline of the new kingdom begins. So there you go. That is a wrap on Notes Part 4, The Middle Kingdom.